Hello everybody. Does your tank look like this? Let's paint an ATC Honda tank. This is what most of them look like. Faded graphics, small dents, all that can be fixed. So let's jump right into it. How to paint a Honda ATC tank. I've got the hole taped off on the top here fuel filler hole. I've taken off this decal on the top. I'm going to work on these and I'm just going to take the clear and feather all the clear here and get any kind of done it up here and I'll show you how the primer usually a couple of different applications of primer and wet sanding it'll get it all flat but sometimes I'm lucky and I do it in one. Just lay the like four or five coats of the high build primer on and sand it down and this is what I'm using and there it is ready to put some self-etching primer and that's after two light coats and I'm gonna give it one more light coat you don't need to cover it all it's just so that we can get some adhesion on the metal and there we are and it's not completely covering you can still see red so we'll let that flash and then we're going to hit it with the regular uh, high build primer. Now that's the self etching primer. And up here are the two primers I've used. I like this one the best. This isn't bad. It, it leaves kind of a rough texture. You can't see it here, but uh, it, it, it doesn't go out as smooth. Now it might be something I'm doing. So anyway, we're going to use this just because I need to get this off my shelf. We're back up top now. We've got plenty of primer on there. And there's some waving I can see right in here. That's where I ground down to metal. And then this is still had paint. And you're going to watch how easily that's going to sand away. But there is a spot right here that I'm going to fill. And there's a spot right here you can't see it but what I'm going to use is I've used this for forever it's Norton premium glaze I mean when you do motorcycles this thing's nearly full but it's so old that it's gotten dried a little bit and I'm on I'm on a different hardener this hardener is from something else but it all works so I'm going to fill those two spots and then we're going to throw a a guide coat on it and block it and there's the guide coat and a little spot so now the wet sanding begins I'm using 400 grit and a dura block it's pretty a hard block it doesn't move much but this is really a good example of why I do a, a guide coat I mean these areas here These are low spots, so if, you know, you're going to sand it without any guide coat, you know, you could be sanding on this area. You can't feel these. <clears throat> you can't feel these, these differences in height. You know, this is definitely low, right? Low, low, low. You could be sanding in the wrong spots. And so anyway, I'll show you what it looks like when I sand this down to get all of these low spots taken out. So I'm gonna show you how these come out and how you sand it, or at least how I do it. My tanks come out pretty damn nice. So, you know, just different angles. You don't wanna lay on one spot too long because you wanna bring it all down flat. And I'm just doing this one spot. I will go around the corners eventually. And there'll be, as you can see, there'll be areas, low areas and so forth there. But what we're focusing on is getting out, getting this tank flat. You can see that it slowly goes away. So you just keep doing that. You don't want to focus on 
just the, the low area. And it, cause if you do, it'll, it'll just bring everything. It'll just be low, but we're nearly there. You can see. So these right here, you know, they're definitely going to go away. That one's a little deeper. And I'll start moving over onto the turn, onto the corner. And that'll get me a nice flat edge there. But, as you can see, that's what you do. And I think... I think you get the idea. Here's the how the whole tank should look. The whole tank should look like this, only with none of this black. So I just need to do a little bit more. I'll do it right here, real quick, just to get these two out. Just then I know that my area here, and there's plenty of primer on there, so. You can tell if you're going to start to burn through, but that doesn't really matter. As long as you don't go down to metal, you know, I'll start hitting the red paint or whatever. There's still a couple little little spots, and that's what's so good about the guide code. It'll let you know. I mean, I, I don't have any rough paint look at all. It's all shiny and glass because I take it all the way down to where I don't have any black showing it all and this is gonna make this tank just better than new I mean they didn't come out very good from the factory uh, they, they really didn't spend much time these were toys you know they just kind of ran them through the paint process but there it is now there's no, there's no black, there's some spots here, but that's on the curve. But the area I was showing you, that's how I need to get the whole tank. Basically just total gray and none of this black, none of these little dots. And of course I found another dent, so I'll fill it. So I got the, the dent taken out and then there was a small little pinhole. And I wonder if I'm the only one that gets those. I mean, you'd think you've got enough on there and then a hole deep enough and it'll show up in the paint. So that puts you back about you know, 20 minutes. There's plenty of other sanding. To so I'm at the point now where I'm going to lay down the hard block. I've done everything I can with the block. Probably, I could still probably get these two small low spots out. Certainly I can get this out. But I don't want to take all this away until I really know that I can sand this down and match all that in. So, as you can see, I get down a little bit here. I figure the more I can get with a big heart, with that hard block, the straighter and flatter this tank's going to be. And over here, I didn't even get on the body line there. But you can see, I pretty much got it all sanded down. And I'm leaving a little bit of sanding left for this, for that flexible block. This one here. This is a two-sided. It's got two different um, foams here. So this side's a little stiffer than, than this side. So basically, I'm just going to take the soft side. And then I'm going to finish off the sanding. But I'm going to start with a little bit with the hard block right here. Just to get this down a little bit more. After it's, it's, it's pretty much to the point where and it's still a little tacky. But I'll get that done. And in the meantime, I'm going to use the soft block on the whole tank other than that so we'll come back when the tanks pretty much sanded one thing about YouTube that I really don't like is that they get all at upset when you have uh, you know music in the background and I've got uh, 
player baby come back the long version which yeah it's kind of like a kind of a i don't know 80s pop song but oh god it sounds good on this Halfler with 250 watts per channel running through the marantz as a preamp and then i've got these speakers up here that are hand built homemade i i built these from a kit with custom crossovers got 15 inch woofers oh my gosh it just sounds so good i wish i could have it in the background for you but you just don't get to hear it because of youtube so thank youtube and there it is ready to step up to 800 and i'm just <clears throat> picking out you know the sandpaper i mean it i think the the coarsest you'd want to go underneath a paint job would be like 320 but I go 400 or, you know, 400, 500, and then like maybe 600 and 800 to finish before I lay on the base coat. So let's get the all the rest of the little, you know, there's little stuff still left here. And I leave it on purpose so that I can go over the tank one more time with that. with that soft block and the 800 and just get everything out but hopefully not burn through too much and too many spots and there it is it's done now right down here i burnt through but i've painted many a tank and that's never been a problem you just don't go real heavy on the first coat let it tack up a little and there's the Kind of what it'll look like, the shine, you know, you get a little bit of an idea. But all of the guide coats off. And it's ready for the base coat. All I've got to do is put some more tape on the gas filling area there and then wipe it down, do our base. And then clear all right it's in the booth we've already wiped it off with grease remover we're gonna give it a just a final little wipe off with the tap cloth and then we're gonna get some red on it and here we go.
second coat, you can see there's a couple of light spots here. I can see it in these lights. So I'm going to give it a third coat. Yeah. 
as the first coat of the clear. Now I don't really put it on really thick or really thin. I just try to cover it, maybe kind of a wet coat, medium wet. The last coat, I try to put on a little heavier to get a more of a gloss, glass finish. Now the second coat. a small bug, it's clear coat. You can sand it afterward and polish it and it looks actually just flawless. So we'll get number three out. I'm going to wait about six to eight minutes between coats and you're supposed to wait about 15-20 minutes between the base coat and doing the clear coat. And then in between the base coats, another five, seven minutes. Just till it flashes dull and kind of dry. That gives you some times. All right, the last coat. I'm gonna do the top first because uh, the, the level of clear in here, I'm worried about not shooting air. So,
four. I don't see any slides or runs. I was really trying to lay it on pretty thick on the final four. And now, let's clean the gun and walk away. Let it sit overnight. We'll put the tank on here. skis because they don't get in the way and yeah, that's a pretty close match huh that's an exact match that's the color there that's for sure and it's time to start <clears throat> positioning the graphics so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out a lot of this paper so I can get something that works better. But what I'm finding is that it lays about like right there. And what you got is at first glance, I thought this lined up with this body line, but it doesn't. It, it That's probably more like it there. The Honda is at a little bit of an angle and this top ends right about on this body line so that's about where i'm thinking so there we are it's a little better and what i have here is a picture off the internet and also a picture of the tank before i painted it so I can go off of that. And that's about, that's right where I think it's gonna go. So what you do, just very lightly, because this is fresh paint, just tape those pieces and hold back your decal. That way you're right where you wanna be. Start kind of in the middle, move it out, move it out, and you're probably going to have to re-stick re this a little bit. There's nothing wrong with taking taking it back. Get it to line up and lay down right. There we are. So let's see what we got here. tape off as soon as I could. The paint's so fresh here. And the nice thing about base coat and clear coat is that you can 
sand. There we are. Extra careful. And there it is. The 83 Honda 200 tank. And I think she looks pretty good. Real nice. Nice and shiny. Great graphics. It's coming along so well, it's probably going to be hard to ride this off-road. But that's just the way it goes. So here's the paint. And that's how you paint the tank on an ATC Honda and apply the decals.